Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the EC extended model for today's second video. It's your European out for the next 30 days slash uh, six weeks. So I shall get on that for you in a second. Just say that first uh, video you say was our 6 cm upload. Got a tank of morning there coming up for you later on with all of the regular features. And if that wasn't enough, we've got Terry Scholl in the before gas on the way as well. So it's going to be a busy day at Gaz Lovers. Please like, share, subscribe on videos. And thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, okay, let's start off with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly then. This is going to take us from the 31st of January to the 7th of February. Uh, we're going to be week, we'll, or this week, I suppose, we'll have high pressure across Western Europe and out into the Atlantic. It's still there, still being that omnipresent feature throughout the uh, winter, that ridge extending from uh, Newfoundland down to Bay of Biscay. Lower pressure will be to the north, across northern and also eastern parts of Europe. So winter will remain in this eastern part of Europe, but uh, in the west of Europe, it looks pretty mild with that ridge of high pressure weight to west. The 500 millibar. Height only shows it's up nice as well, with the below average heights across northern, eastern and northeastern parts of Europe above average heights to the west and also to the southwest. It sends the jet flow and uh, jet stream and wind flow uh, on that sort of alignment. And of course that does take the coldest of the air down the eastern uh, side of Europe with that trough of low pressure. This is how our temperature anomalies are looking. Rather cold and average across uh, many parts of Scandinavia. Certainly the Scandinavian Peninsula, though Denmark and just to the far south of Sweden and Norway does look a little bit milder. But much of Scandinavia looks rather cold. And of course, Eastern Europe is pretty cold, uh, particularly the southeastern corner. So the Balkans down to uh, Greece, Turkey, uh, looking rather cold there. Otherwise, it's generally quite mild, especially through most Western parts of Europe, any, anywhere from like Poland westwards, all the way to Ireland and Portugal in the west, looks uh, generally mild. Some places will be very, very mild indeed in those uh, red colours. There's the uh, temperature anomaly scale, 3 to 6 degrees above average in some parts of southern England. Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like that. So, uh, again, rather wetter than average uh, through Germany to Poland, up to Denmark, also into some parts of Scandinavian Peninsula, rather wetter through there. Much of Western Europe looks pretty dry. Most parts of southern Europe looking generally dry uh, as well around the Balkans. And the age looks quite dry, both through Greece and Turkey. Looks wet there. And of course, as it's rather cold in that part of the world, we can expect some snow down there. That's where it is. Right, week two will take us from the 7th to the 14th of February. And uh, once again, high pressure is ruling the roost across much of... Uh, Western Europe, we've got lower pressure in the far north and northeast. The jet stream going through something a little bit like that. Most unsettled weather will be in the extreme north and northeast of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows low pressure again uh, in the far north and also extending down the eastern side of Europe. Higher pressure across western parts of Europe and out into the Atlantic and down towards Spain as well. The jet stream We'll be doing something a little bit like that. So, the temperature anomaly for week two goes very mild in many areas, though it is cold and average from the Black Sea down to Greece and through Turkey, and also into the Middle East as well. Snow likely to fall, you know, probably in desert regions. Um, but other than that, milder than average, like through uh, Scandinavia all the way down into the Mediterranean, we see a wide, large area of um, above average uh, temperatures. You know, in some places, uh, very, very mild indeed. Again, three to six degrees or more above average. Precipitation wise, looking like this. So a little bit more unsettled for some northern uh, West Persia. Well, I haven't flipped that over, have I? A little bit more. Uh, sort of about. Right, okay. Uh, so, uh, still rather dry. Forget that happened. Rather dry than average across much of West Europe and most parts of Southern. Europe looked pretty dry too. The east of Europe looks rather wet from Poland, um, you know, towards Black Sea and whatnot. And then up to Scandinavia, it's uh, wet and average through uh, Norway, but rather dry and average through Sweden and down to Denmark. Week 3 will be the 14th to the 21st of February. High pressure then builds in across most parts of Europe, so you have a large ridge that's in control of the weather. Some lower pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland, with the jet stream pushed a bit further north as well. But overall, high pressure is uh, dominating the scene in the third week. 
And uh, we see it with 500 millibar height on me as well, with the above average heights extending from the Atlantic into Western and Northern Europe. Lower pressure again around Greenland and Iceland. Jet streams push northwards too. There is some lower pressures running down the eastern side of Europe. Temperature anomalies are looking rather like this, so uh, a little bit on the cold of an average side still, or significantly cold on average really, uh, let's be honest, in that extreme southeastern corner, so even into the middle of February, um, you know, there could be more snow from Greece, Turkey, into the Middle East as well, meanwhile, western and northwestern Europe, um, significantly milder than average, and especially so through Scandinavia, and down into Germany, into the Low Countries as well, into UK and Ireland. Uh, once more, and uh, precipitation-wise, look like this, largely dry than average in most parts of Europe, but a little bit wetter than average uh, in the extreme north. But the emphasis with that high pressure is on dry weather through many, many areas. Week four would be the 21st to the 28th of February. No changes, high pressure continues to be ruling the roost across most parts of uh, Europe. I mean, there's not much else to say. <coughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. Uh, is there, really? Um, the uh, week four 500 millibar height anomaly, again, shows all of the high-pressure domination across most parts of northern western Europe. Lower pressures away to the northwest um, as well. So no changes with that. Temperature-wise, the southeast of Europe from southern Russia into Greece and Turkey and down to Middle East looks colder than normal. Western, northwestern Europe looking uh, milder than average, substantially so in northern parts of Europe. And then in between in this white area, um, you know, there we've got near normal temperatures or we have no still on the boundary between the colder and the drier, uh, the colder and the um, milder weather. And then uh, week four precipitation, looks like that, still that large high going on, so uh, most areas still looking substantially drier than normal all the way from the Atlantic coast right way over to the Black Sea. Right, so that's the 30-day look here done. Let's just have a look at weeks five and six data before we go. So this is week five, mean cell pressure anomaly, and uh, it's no change, high pressure still ridging in from the Atlantic into western parts of Europe. Week five, uh, 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, ridges the high pressure in off the Atlantic, covers most parts of Europe. The temperature anomaly is drier than average, well, warmer than average, I should say, through most areas. In the north and west, still colder than average in that southeastern. We've got a very, very cold February coming up, like Greece and Turkey and the Middle East. Uh, and then uh, precipitation-wise, again, most areas drier than normal. That's just going ever so slightly wetter in the far north and northwest of Europe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm looking for something, anything really, that would signal some kind of change. And then week six, um, on and on and on and on it goes, doesn't it? Will this ridge ever go will it be here forever will it be here in 2562 or something i don't know but <laughs> that high pressure just sits there like a never-ending slug um and the 500 millibar height anomaly again just has that high pressure there it does not shift does it uh, no changes with the temperature anomaly either. I'm going to get on and get this done, I think. And precipitation anomalies, again, no change. Uh, right then, so we're into mid-March with this. And there's absolutely no sign of any change whatsoever. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll still have this high pressure going on in the summer. If we do, it will be a really hot summer through uh, many parts of Europe. Could it collapse and shift and we go into another pattern? By summer, I don't know. I've had enough of it, though. I have to say, really, really have had enough of this winter. I cannot remember such a tedious winter as this. It is absolutely dreadful uh, for me to try and find something to talk about. So there we go. Uh, that's that done and dusted, Then We'll be back later on when you attain to 14 day. I'm going to have Terry Scholes' perfect forecast coming up for you as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this week's EC. Uh, 30 days slash uh, six weeks. Okay, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.